ASTAT students. Today we're talking about bivariate data, data with two variables, twice as good as univariate. Uh, and in particular, we're going to talk about scatter plots, association, and correlation. This is our first of probably three, maybe four videos on bivariate data. Okay? So let's check out our first scatter plot. This is data of uh, SAT scores. Each one of these dots uh, represents a different SAT score, so probably a different student taking the SAT. And our x-axis here shows verbal SAT scores. Our y-axis shows math SAT scores. Okay? When we talk about uh, bivariate data, we're going to do a lot of the same things that we did with univariate data. That is, we're going to illustrate it using a scatter plot. We're going to describe it using words, just like we did, just like we could we cussed about the univariate data. We're going to talk about bivariate data. And we describe it using um, numerical summaries. Okay? So instead of looking at all this data here, we're just going to come up with a few numbers that will describe it for us. So first off, let's, a little, let's get a little uh, vocabulary down. I mentioned the x-axis and the y-axis. Well, the x variable is actually called the explanatory variable. And the y variable is called the response variable. Now, the reason we have these words is that when we're looking at bivariate data, what we want to do is we want to look at predictions. We want to look at the ability to predict. Uh, uh, and in particular, what I want to know is, if I know the value of my explanatory variable, how well can I predict the value of the response variable? Now, I want to be real clear that this does not suggest that the response variable is dependent on the explanatory variable. Okay? Unlike in algebra, we do not talk about the independent variable and the dependent variable. We say explanatory variable and response variable, and we don't talk about whether one is causing the other one. Okay? So uh, uh, let's. Uh, oh, what we're going to say when we talk about this data, we're going to talk about the direction, we're going to talk about unusual characteristics, we're going to talk about form, and we're going to talk about strength. Okay, so if I were looking at this uh, uh, scatter plot here, uh, one of the things that I would mention is that this is going up. Okay, that uh, generally, as people do better on the verbal part, they also do better on the math part. Uh, there is quite a bit of variance, though. Uh, uh, you definitely, you certainly have your uh, your strong math students who don't do too well on the verbal part, and your strong verbal students who don't do all that well on the math part. Uh, but uh, uh, that's, that's one of the first things that I would notice. But let's talk more specifically about what I mean when I say direction, unusual characteristics, form, and strength. In particular, direction. Okay? Direction simply means positive or negative. Are my data going up or are they going down? Okay? If it's a negative direction, that means that as x goes up, y is going down. As your explanatory variable is going up, your response variable is coming down. By unusual characteristics, well, one of them is an outlier. Uh, hey, what's that guy doing down there? There's an outlier. That certainly doesn't fit the, uh, the pattern of the rest of the data. Um, you might have gaps or clusters. Here's a little gap in our data here, forming two different clusters of data. This is kind of like seeing the, uh, this is kind of like when you have bimodal or multimodal data in uh, univariate data, where you'd look at this and you'd say, ooh, I think I might possibly have two different populations here it might make more sense to split them up and analyze them independently. Um, you also sometimes get scatter plots that kind of fan out like this, okay? Uh, where the greater the value of your uh, explanatory variable, the greater the, uh, the standard deviation, okay? The, the spread of your y variable, of your response variable. Uh, we'll also talk about form, and by form I mean, does it go in a line? Does it curve up like this? Does it curve down like that? This looks, uh, uh, this prior one, this looks a little bit like a, perhaps an exponential curve. And, uh, and then this guy here, this looks a bit like a, perhaps a, a square root curve. Remember all those families of functions you learned in Algebra 2? There was a reason we taught you that stuff. It's going to come in handy. Uh, uh, when you're looking at these curves and trying to figure out what the relationship might be. Okay, and then finally, we want to talk about strength. Okay, how strong is the association? 
Is it a really strong association like this where you can tell the pattern very easily? Is it a little more dispersed? Is that that's this is more of a moderate association? Or do you have a really weak association like this where you look at it and you say, man, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe a tiny bit of a of movement going up, but I can't really tell much of anything. Okay? So that's really what you want to look at when you're describing bivariate data. The direction, the unusual characteristics, the form, the strength. Uh, when we were doing univariate data, we had that nice mnemonic device of uh, uh, you cuss about the data. Uh, doofus? Okay. All right, so scatter plots. What do they show us? They show us relationships or associations between two quantitative variables. Okay? Let me go back to this. Uh, notice we have a numerical scale on both of our axes here. This is not categorical data. This is quantitative data. So don't try to make a scatter plot with categorical data. Okay? Also, they do not imply causation at all. That is to say, we're not looking at this and saying, oh my god, stop studying the math part of your SAT. Just study the verbal part because I've shown here that doing better on the verbal part makes you do better on the math part. No, I didn't. That doesn't say that at all. It just shows that there's an association. Okay? Now, let's talk about correlation. Okay? Correlation is a word that is misused all the time. You'll hear people talk about, oh, there's a strong correlation between gender and political affiliation. No, there's not. There is not a strong, there's not a correlation between uh, uh, gender and political affiliation because correlation has to be between two quantitative variables and gender and political association are both categorical variables. So people use it that way all the time, but in a stats class or in a math class, you should not use it that way at all. We are very, very particular about what this means. And what it means is it's a numerical measurement of the strength of the linear association. It has to be linear, okay? Can't be exponential, can't be uh, quadratic, can't be logarithmic, it must be linear, okay? Correlation also does not imply causation, so stop trying to imply causation. Okay, now, how do we measure correlation? Why? With the correlation coefficient, of course, and we call it R, okay? What is R? R is the average of the product of the z-scores, the explanatory and response variables. Okay, got that? Uh, probably not, so we're going to talk about this a little bit more. How do you calculate the average of the product of the z-scores of the explanatory and response variables? Well, what you do is, you, you, take, you take a point. So you take one of those people taking the SAT. You look at the math score, and compared to all the math scores, you get the z-score for that. Then you look at the verbal score, and compared to all the verbal scores, you get the z-score for that. So now you have two z-scores, one verbal, one math. Multiply them together, okay? Now, do that for everybody who took the SAT. And then take all those products that you got for each person taking the SAT and take the average. That's what R is. It's pretty tedious work, but it gets you a really good, uh, 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 very useful number, okay? So here we are summing up all the uh, z-scores of the x variables, z-scores of the y variables, and we divide by n minus 1. Why n minus 1? Why not n? Well, because here we're using uh, our sample statistics, uh, sample mean and sample uh, standard deviation. And as you remember, sample standard deviation is calculated slightly different from the population standard deviation where we divide by n minus 1 here. And so that way we divide by n minus 1 here as well. If you wanted to, you could also use uh, the z-scores using uh, population parameters, uh, you would end up with the exact same number here, although you probably wouldn't call it R, because if you're talking about a population, you really ought to call it, call it Rho, which is the Greek R. But you know something? Don't worry about all this, because you're probably not going to do it. Just think about the average of the product of the z-scores of the explanatory and response variables. Okay, so let's, let's look at what this would look like if we were going to do it, but you probably never will. We have a very, very sparse scatter plot here, just six points, and uh, looks like I have a, a negative direction here. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's, I'd say that's moderate, uh, you might even call it strong uh, uh, association, 
because you can definitely see a pattern there. You don't have to go looking for it. Here are our uh, x coordinates. Here are the y coordinates of the points that we have there. Here's the mean of our x data. Here's the standard devi deviation. Uh, I use the uh, sample standard deviation. Here's the mean of our y data, and this is standard deviation. Um, so using my mean and my standard deviation, I can now calculate z-scores. So this number right here, this negative 0.4117, this is 8 minus 10 divided by uh, 4.86. And this 0.7976, this is 12 minus 8.67 divided by 4.18. So I would go through there, I would get all my z-scores like that. I would then multiply my x z-score with my y z-score to get a product. And then I would sum all those up, divide by n minus 1, and get presto, that number right there. Negative 0.86. That's my correlation coefficient for this set of data. Okay? So, uh, let's go back to our SAT scores. And uh, what I want to do is, I want to, uh, instead of looking at the scale like this, where I have my actual SAT scores here, the actual SAT scores here, I want to change the scale. So now what I have down here are Z-scores. So now what we have are the Z-scores of all the SAT scores. Okay? And you'll notice that the shape of this really hasn't changed at all. It looks exactly like the prior uh, scatter plot. It's just that now... Um, we just use a different scale, okay? Now, one more thing I want you to notice. Uh, and that is, everything over here has a negative x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate. So when I multiply the z-scores to get the product, I'm going to get a negative product. Same thing down here. This has a negative y-coordinate and a positive x-coordinate, so when I multiply negative times positive, I'm going to get a negative product here. Not true here. This is going to get positive, and this is going to be negative times negative, which also gets a positive. Notice, this stuff here really outweighs this stuff here. So when I sum up all these products, I'm going to get a positive number. I've got a lot of positive numbers here, a few negatives. So I'm going to get a positive number. And then when I divide by n minus 1, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's still going to be a positive number. That's a very, very important thing. And something else to think about is, if this were more linear, so let's say it were more compact like this, I would have even less data in here and in here. It would almost all be positive, meaning that r would go up even more. So what that tells me is, with a, with a positive association, okay, with a positive direction, that the more linear it is, the more tightly packed it is, the higher up R is going to go. By the way, if this were a negative slope, the exact opposite would be true. I would have way more data here and here, and almost nothing here and here. So that tells me that the, the, the stronger the association for a positive direction, the higher R is going to be. And the stronger the association for a negative direction, the lower, the more negative R is going to be. And if you have something like this, like it looks like a shotgun blast, where there's just really doesn't seem to be any association at all in the, uh, these data, well now you can see that this stuff and this stuff is going to be offset pretty much exactly by this stuff and this stuff, giving us a correlation of zero. Okay? So... This actually looks like the, the x and y variables are independent, meaning there's no relationship among them at all. And if that's the case, we will have a correlation of zero. Now, correlation of zero doesn't mean that necessarily there's no association. Here's another one that has correlation of zero, but definitely does have an association. This has a really strong association. I can see the pattern here. Looks kind of, uh, kind of parabolic, right? But, look. Here we have negative products offset by positive products. Negative products offset by positive products. It's pretty obvious to see that when you average up all those products, you're going to get zero. Uh, but that does not imply that there's no association here. What it means is that correlation is only meaningful with linear data. 
Okay. If you have any curves in your uh, uh, in your scatter plot, don't try to talk about correlation. Okay. It's only meaningful with linear data. Okay. So, what are some things we know about correlation? The sine of r gives the direction of the association. We just saw that. Uh, it measures the strength of the linear association. We were just talking about that between two variables. And the further from zero, the stronger the linear association. Okay, so if it gets really, really negative, that means it's tightly packed and going down. If it gets really, really positive, that means it's tightly packed and going up. Okay, uh, what else do we know? It has no units. Hmm. Uh, correlation, we don't talk about uh, R inches or R pounds or anything like that. Because remember what this is? This is two z-scores multiplied by each other. Z-scores are already somewhat unitless uh, themselves. Um, it's based on z-scores, so it's not affected by changes in center or scale, nor by switching explanatory and response variables. Okay? What this means by is, uh, let's say I had, um, let's say I had temperatures that were measured in Celsius, and then I remeasured those temperatures in Fahrenheit. My z-scores aren't going to change at all. Okay? So I changed both the center and the and the scale there when I changed from Fahrenheit to or from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but um, it doesn't change my z-scores. Therefore, it doesn't change R. And when I said it doesn't change by switching explanatory and response variables, if you look back at the at the formula again, we had the z-scores, uh, the x z-scores times the y z-scores. You could switch those around and it wouldn't change the formula at all. So what that means is. If I changed my verbal and math and moved one from the, from the explanatory to the response and the other one from the response to the explanatory, wouldn't change R at all. Uh, that ends up being uh, uh, very interesting. Finally, we didn't talk about this. Correlation is always between negative one and one. Okay? So the possible values for R are simply between negative one and one. Negative one means all of your, all of your points line up perfectly in a negative slope, and positive one means all of your points line up perfectly in a positive slope, okay? Uh, how great is the slope? Well, I don't know. That's, that's not what R tells you, okay? It just tells you how, how well it's lined up. Uh, so, here's one. This has a correlation of one, uh, and as you can see, this is completely lined up. This has a correlation of, I'm sorry, let's go back. This is a correlation of negative one, not one, okay? Because it's got a negative slope there, okay? This one has a correlation of, I think this is negative 0.9. Let me make sure. Uh, yes. Negative 0.9, so you can see it's still considered a strong association, uh, but not, not lined up perfectly like before. This is negative 0.8. I would call this, this is like between moderate and strong. Okay? You can still easily see that this has a negative direction, but it's not, uh, uh, not nearly as impressively packed as uh, the one with the negative 0.9. This is negative 0.6. This is, uh, this is more moderate. Okay? Um, you can still see that there is an association, but it's, you're, you're now kind of looking for it. This is now uh, negative 0.4. This is a very weak association, to tell you the truth, okay? And this, this is zero. There's no association here at all. Moving again, this is positive 0.4. There's a little bit of uh, a direction upward, uh, but still, it's still a weak association. Uh, here's positive 0.6, still a, uh, uh, well, this is... I guess I would call this moderate association. Positive 0.8, we're getting, uh, we're getting stronger. This is between moderate and strong. Positive 0.9, now that's a nice, strong association. And positive 1, <laughs> you don't see data like that, okay? That's, that's kind of unheard of. It's so good. Okay, so that's it for correlation. Next video, linear regression. What do we do in linear regression? Same stuff, except now we draw lines. We draw lines that actually model the data, and we find the equation for those lines. See that?